Welcome to Brampton Focus. My next guest is a liberal. She ran in the last election and defeated a conservative incumbent with 23,000 votes that punched her ticket to Ottawa and to represent us in our federal government. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Next, we meet Ruby Sahota right here on Brampton Focus. Back to Brampton Focus. Our guest today, Ms. Ruby Sohota. Ms. Sohota is a liberal politician and she represents the Brampton North Riding uh, in Brampton. And, uh, you know, she won against Parm Gill, who was the Conservative member, uh, by a huge margin. She uh, uh, had 23,000 votes, winning by a margin of 7,422. And when the election was going on, Ruby said, I grew up in this riding. I'm raising my son in this riding. I know how many people, I know how people here feel. And uh, they want better health care. They want jobs and we're going to make family reuni reunification under the immigration policy simpler and faster. Ms. Ruby Sahota, after six months, welcome to Brampton Focus. Thank you so much for having me here. So uh, when you venture to the hill, it's always interesting to come back home. Six months now that uh, you've been elected, I give our folks at home a little bit of an idea of what you've seen, what you've learned, what you've accomplished, what you want to do, because it, it can become overwhelming on the hill. Yeah, I think I've just started taking my training wheels off. Uh, the first few months is a lot of learning. And uh, and I've got to say, we have soaked in quite a lot. Uh, there were a lot of new MPs this year. And, you know, we have learned procedure quite well. I, I sit on the procedure committee for the House right now, too. So uh, that's also taught me quite a lot about the know-how of, you know, presenting motions and bills and how it all functions and works. So it's quite fascinating. And uh, now that we're learning how, you know, lawmaking works, it's also great to be back in the riding this week because I think this is probably one of the most important aspects of our jobs is hearing and listening to the people and uh, making sure that we're implementing and, you know, being the voice of the people. And what have world. you heard? What have you heard since you've been back? Um, well, we have various concerns that walk through the door. Uh, immigration is definitely one of the main things that people come to their local MPs for. Uh, but of course, retirement issues, tax issues, and a lot of general stakeholders in the community will come to us for uh, to highlight, you know, what their organization has been doing, find out whether they're, you know, pot potentially uh, can be considered for some grants or funding from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And and also they just like to create general awareness for their cause at times. So uh, Bill Morneau, let's get down to the brass taxi. Bill, Bill Morneau is, uh, uh, just released his first federal budget. He called it affordable and reasonable. Some would call that into question. Uh, big deficits, uh, $229.4 billion. But there is some implementation for in infrastructure, First Nations uh, spending, some extension in the EI benefits. On April the 8th, uh, you went to, to uh, Brampton, uh, you had a breakfast meeting, and you gave some of the folks there uh, an overview. Can, can you touch on some of the things you talked about with respect to the budget and what we could see in the budget for Brampton? I think it's absolutely a reasonable budget, and we're quite thrilled about this budget. And I've had a lot of good feedback uh, regarding this budget because, you know, various stakeholders that had come to me in the past and during the election, what we were hearing about was making life more affordable, uh, creating jobs, uh, helping the middle class. That was our, that's the platform we ran on and that's the focus we have in this budget today. So, uh, you know, talking about the breakfast that we held uh, with BeBot, you know, a lot of concerns were concerns of the business class and uh, what businessmen and women or business people in Brampton need. And what they need is sales. They need business. They need, um, you know, a lot of times we get into taxes and a lot of other things, but the reason most businesses fail is a lack of uh, being able to sell their product or get their product to market or, you know, a, a lot of those types of concerns. And, and that's something that this budget addresses. Some would also say is business, uh, uh, business people, uh overextension of government taxes and regulations are also a, a very huge encumbrance uh, on, on being able to conduct business. Well, uh, right now, uh, the corporate business tax rate is at 26 point something, and mm -hmm. uh, the, the small business tax rate is at about 14%, uh, percent, which is provincial and federal combined. 
So, you know, it's still at quite a reasonable point. Uh, we have re reduced the small business tax rate, maybe not uh, not as much as we had li would have liked, but we did reduce it to some degree. And it's, you know, often what I'm hearing from small business is that they need to sell their products. They need to have customers. So our budget allows the middle class to have more, uh, you know, more income in their pocket at the end of the day to be able to spend and and that's what the businesses here need i i rarely ever hear that a business is going belly up because they couldn't pay their taxes but because they've had a decrease in sales uh, and that's the main concern and that's what we're focused on we're focusing on growing this economy and making sure that the middle class has that money to spend in in our communities here locally one of the one of the crookses, if you wish, or one of the um, the elements that Justin Trudeau ran on was saying that we were going to have a $10 billion deficit. Um, now we come to hear once things are moving on that it's a $29.4 billion. Then there's talk of in 2020 and 2021, it's going to go to $113 billion, some $9 million a day in interest. Now, I know you're not um, the budget person, and I'm not trying to ring your bell, but you have to answer those questions as much as anybody else. How do you handle that when people say, to you, we were told 10, now it's 29.4. We're spending more than we have. How do we, how do we answer that question? Well, uh, this is the right time to invest and many economists have been, uh, you know, have been to brought into this process and we've taken advice. Uh, this is something that the IMF has, uh, um, you know, has insisted that is it's a smart time and it's the right time to do it, uh, which is invest in our community. So I don't see, you know, why I say this budget is still reasonable, although that we have a larger deficit than we first, uh, you know, first thought is because the GDP to uh, debt ratio is still quite reasonable. Yes, well, they it's say quite the low. GDP ratio for England is about 6%. We're about uh, 2.1 or something like that. And they're saying that it's very reasonable. So It's extremely reasonable. Yeah. We are in the best, one of the best positions globally around the world mm -hmm. to invest right now. So this, if we don't take the opportunity now to provide for, you know, our future generations to improve our infrastructure that desperately needs mm -hmm. it, especially here in Brampton and in rural areas and around the world in Caledon, that's also a part of the Peel area. They have have a lot of concerns they don't even have internet all over the but you know and that's something that this budget also provides for small businesses out there desperately need to compete in this global market that we have and we need the infrastructure in place yep. so I you know I absolutely think it's the right time to invest because as we can see you know so I'm just gonna hold you right down we? we can continue this when we come back but we're also going to take some Facebook questions from some of you people who came on to Brampton Focus my name is Michael A. Charbonne back with more right after this Welcome back to segment two of Brampton Focus, sitting down with Ruby Sahota, representing Brampton North in our federal government, representing the Liberals. Um, when we left, I, I had to go to commercial, but I wanted to give you a chance to finalize your statement. We were talking about uh, the reaction of the public to the to to the debt. And, and how you handle that. I mean, you're not the finance minister, but you are the liberal representative for Brampton North. And I can imagine you kind of get disease from people after a little while. So you have to handle that that statement. And I wanted to just give you an opportunity to finish what you were saying because I interrupted well, you. Well, I'd just like to say that uh, this debt is about 1.5% of our GDP. So that gives us a ratio of, of GDP, a ratio of, you know, the 30 31 to 32 percent that we were talking about when we had a crisis in 95 we were looking at a ratio that was at 65 percent mm -hmm. uh, staying on the liberal plan the government's plan that we have imposed right now is going to allow us to grow this economy and actually lessen uh, lessen that that ratio so we're looking at about 32 percent now in 2021, we're hoping if we stay according to the plan, we'll be looking at about 30%. So this is the right time to make these investments. And uh, that's that we, what we should be looking at, not the number of the deficit. But I the think we should oil, be looking at the ratio. Oil prices have gone down. We were, based, we were based on a $100 a barrel of oil. Now it's it's under 30. Yes. Uh, we, we look at the economies around the world. Everybody's overextended. Some people are concerned that we're spending money that we don't have. We're in such a good position. The best banking system in the world 
world, rated as one of the best places to do business, is Canada. Yeah. I, I think people are concerned. We don't want to put ourselves in jeopardy by by borrowing too much. Well, basically. like we've seen, uh, markets can be volatile, yeah. and uh, we don't know exactly what will happen in the future. However, the budget has been very conservative mm -hmm. and has marked their barrel of oil quite low. So we're not looking at uh, you know a, a pretty picture, and they've been really conservative as to uh, the numbers. So uh, this could be a worst case scenario uh, rather than a best case scenario. And we might end up with hopefully uh, doing even better in the future, but uh, to only time will tell. Right. Um, Brampton Focus uh, has been uh, obtaining questions from you, our viewers, both on Brampton Focus on our Facebook and on our Twitter. And one of the questions uh, that we've gotten, uh, these are people who are interested in trade, uh, small businesses. And they're wondering about uh, the fact, is the government going to have public consultation, the government being the federal government, on certain trade agreements. Now, trade agreements that have come up, uh, the CET, the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, TPP, we've heard a lot about that, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And another one, which I didn't know too much about, was, was a Trade and Service Agreement, TISA. Um, are the Liberals intending to entertain public consultation? Will we have an opportunity to, to buy into some of these trade agreements? Uh, Michael, I definitely foresee having public uh, consultations. We've been having them, you know, we had them for the budget. We had them, uh, we're having them for climate change right now. Uh, TPP, I mean, I can say personally myself, a lot of people from my riding have been approaching me. I've got Chrysler yeah. uh, right next door there. And, uh, you know, I've talked to the union reps there. And, uh, you know, I'm on the auto caucus as well. And there's a lot of stakeholders that we've been inviting to, you know, do presentations. I know the dairy farmers are quite concerned as well. Uh, you know, it's something that we're still looking into. It hasn't been uh, agreed upon yet, but, uh, you know, we There's lots of hair on that tennis ball, as they would say. Yes, there there is. And, and we're going to do our due diligence uh, in making sure that Canadians are, uh, you know, whatever decision we come to in the end, that it best affects uh, Canadians as a whole. So another uh, Brampton Focus Facebook and Twitter question was uh, voter um, uh, proportional representation, where we talk about one vote, uh, one person. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about electoral reform, how we go about doing that. Is it a, is it a, is it a good thing to do? I wanted to get your take on that. Well, it was one of our platform pl promises as well. The next election will not uh, be under the system we currently have, but under uh, a new system. What that system is going to be is something we're also engaging in public consultations with people, with other, you know, other members in the House. We've had cross-party debate and discussions on this. It's been quite productive, I believe. And, uh, you know, it, we, a lot of people are looking at proportional representation. What kind of proportional representation? We don't yeah. know at this point. Uh, it can be quite complex. And there's different systems that are being all across, used all across the world. So we're, you know, thoughtful debate and discussion is going on behind the scenes on this. And we'll also be consulting uh, people all, all across we, we Canada. We can talk coast about marijuana as well. I mean, that's another one of the platform uh, pieces. Um, I want to go on to something called temporary worker visas. Um, mm -hmm. There's been many situations where uh, temporary worker visas have been granted to many people here. And they uh, complete their visas. They're, they've been working here quite a long time. And once their visa expires, there are certain times when the government, federal government, will want to remove them from the company, a country because they've overextended their visa. There are some groups that have said that um, there are some people who are targeted more than others with regards to being asked to leave after uh, their temporary worker visas have expired. What's your take on that? Um, I'd be quite interested to know what groups are saying that they've been targeted. I mean, that's something that I would definitely uh, be the first to stand up against and, you know, make sure that people weren't being targeted just because of their, their background or uh, their socioeconomic background, whatever it may be. I, I don't know uh, what the allegations are, but uh, temporary foreign worker visas, there is something that, you know, there has been a recent big announcement from our immigration minister on. Uh, there's parts, places in our country that are desperate for skills labor and uh, you know there's going to be unlimited visas granted in uh, the maritime provinces to help with the fishery programs uh, companies there um, so it's 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 definitely a program that the government is quite interested in and is investing a lot into 
So, you know, it's a program we want to see continue. And uh, we hope that those people that have stayed and contributed to our Canadian economy for a long time end up staying in Canada because uh, we, we want those types of people because mm. they, you know, they are what creates and what I mean, makes the farm this country workers, great. Uh, the, uh, in southern Ontario, uh, London, etc., there, there's large amounts of people who, who do that mm -hmm. a kind of work. Well, I mean, without knowing all the details at yeah, this no, point, I, it's hard I know. for me to I, say. It, it's tough. Yeah. It's just that there were some people who, who felt that they were uh, un, unfairly targeted. Mm -hmm. um, when we come back, our final segment, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about what's going to be brought to Brampton because we want to find out a little more hyper-focused towards uh, what Brampton is going to see in the budget. We also want to give an opportunity for you to talk to the folks at home, and we'll wrap it up. One more segment. Stay tuned. Brampton Focus. My name is Michael Sharbal. We're here with Ruby Sahota. We'll be back with more right after this. to Brampton Focus with Ruby Sahota from Brampton North, our Liberal representative. When we uh, left, we talked about um, equal votes, um, uh, electoral representation. I want to talk about $3.4 billion in the budget that's been put aside for public transit and for infrastructure. Uh, the TTC, Toronto Transit Commission, said that there are $3 billion in arrears. And unfortunately, municipalities aren't necessarily always the best stewards of money which is sent down to them. We'll talk about the LRT in Brampton if you wish. Um, but in, in specifics, how can we see and what do you believe we will see from an infrastructure standpoint and from a transit standpoint that the people in Brampton will be able to benefit from this $3.4 billion budget coming to Brampton and helping us here? Right, and this this is just for the initial first phase. So mm -hmm. there will be more down the line for creating new projects. Um, but what we can see is, de depending on ridership, we will get our fair share. Where We've got a lot of MPs here in Brampton that are fighting and advocating on Brampton's behalf uh, to be able to get our due share of transit money that we need and infrastructure money and, and water and uh, wastewater repairs that we need. So we, we know we're definitely advocating on Brampton's behalf for that. Uh, what what you referred to uh, about the municipalities, uh, you know, our government and especially the infrastructure minister has a, is of a very strong belief that the money should not be with a lot of strings attached. That uh, you know that is perhaps why some of those previous um, projects have failed. Uh, you mentioned the LRT. Uh, well, we, that was a municipal mm -hmm. situation where the, the council couldn't come to an agreement. I mean, it was an unfortunate situation. Some would say it was the right decision, uh, and others would say it was not. But when we when we talk about infrastructure, when we talk about transit from the federal government, those are those are big dollars. Those are large movements of people and and establishing things. Is 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 there? one particular poke that we can look at and say, yes, that's going to happen to Brampton. We have to look forward to that. Well, it's it's hard for me to say at this point. It is up to the cities, and we have been in talks with the cities and uh, and and the provincial government. Uh, you know, they are the ones to submit the proposals, and if their proposals are good proposals, they will be getting a good a fair share of uh, that that money that's there. Um, but however, we do want the cities to come up with the solutions that are a best fit for their people and their communities. We will be working with the cities, and and you've I think you've seen that. I think the, you know, the people have seen that this government has been working with people. They've been meeting with premiers. They've been meeting with big city mayors and rural mayors and and trying to find out, you know, what 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 they need. Mm -hmm. And so that we're not just coming up with the solutions at the federal level and saying imposing them on different areas, but we're listening to them and and finding out what's most important to them. And that's why we had so many consultations for this budget. Uh, we talk about jobs. I mean, that was something that was uh, talked about uh, during the election. Uh, also a, a huge uh, point with regards to the budget. Um, what kind of job development can we see starting to occur in the city of Brampton? I mean, there was a $2.4 billion put in EI, uh, in, in increases uh, on overhauls, uh, um, taking care of seniors, uh, people in Alberta, Aboriginal people. But unfortunately, the blue collar, hardworking, middle class guy hasn't seen too much of a benefit from any of that. And they're looking for something. They, they need a piece. Um, with, 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 with the advent of you know, our economy and hard times, if one would say, what can we see the government doing tangibly to help folks in Brampton from a job standpoint? 
Well, in this first five years, we've rolled out, we're rolling out $11.6 billion for infrastructure. That's a significant amount. It's an amount that we haven't seen, you know, invested in our communities before. You, our city, Bramptonians will see an immediate result of this. Mm. Uh, you know, the government is very mindful of making sure that uh, the contracts hopefully will be going to people that are of those communities and so that it can benefit not just big corporations, but also it local people. Benefit the little guy. It has to benefit it has the little to benefit. guy, and we have to also do, you know, a, a gender analysis and make sure that it's also benefiting women as well, yeah. and and people of all backgrounds, mm -hmm. so that uh, you know the projects that we put in place are helping the people in those cities and in the surrounding areas, and and that's something that we are committed to doing. So you know, people will see this Brand, money is Brand coming Tonians out are now. Looking for We're some not, results. So they're they're looking to see some tangible. This results. money's not coming out a year down the road. It's yep. coming out immediately. That's good. To uh, so That's and good to and a lot of it's going into repairing a lot of the you know issues we have with transit, with our water and waste system removal. Yep. Uh, I know that the city is very interested in you know a particular project in that area. The floodplain too. Yes, and uh, we're hoping yep. that that that's one of the projects that will be underway quite soon. So about two minutes left. I want to give you an opportunity to talk directly to the folks in Brampton, Brampton North, your constituents, and uh, allow people if they have questions how they can get in contact with you, Ruby. Well, my office is accessible to all people. It's at 50 Sunny Meadow Boulevard and it's Suite 307. Uh, you're welcome to come by anytime. Uh, you know, you can call ahead at 905-840-0505 or you can drop by without calling as well. Uh, but if you do like, you know, would like to see me, there are some weeks where we're in Ottawa and, you know, I would love to meet with any constituent that wants to meet with me. So the weeks that I am here and the days that I'm here, uh, I am keep my schedule open just to meet with people. So please stop on by. You can also find me online and on Facebook and, you know, all, all social media that uh, yep. we're a part yep. of these very, days. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you know, you can get in touch with me in various, various ways. So please come by if you have a proposal of some sort, if you just want to comment about the budget or the, you know, yeah. uh, environment. We're taking consultations on that now. And um, you So know, about a minute left. What, what, is, what is something that the Ruby wants to sink her teeth into? Is there, is there something we can say that you, you, you want to come back uh, with and say, I did this or I, wanna, I learned more about this? You know, one thing I heard a lot, um, a lot during the election is, is not on a large scale of, you know, we, my passion, like I was mentioning to you off the air for a little while ago, yep. is human rights. But on a small, on a local scale, people were saying we want our politicians to be accessible. Uh, you know, a lot of times we see them during the election and then we don't see them afterwards. Right. So that's my main goal actually Good. right now in this first term is to be accessible and to be available for the people. Ruby Sahota representing Brampton North for our Liberals and doing a good job. We'd like to thank you so much for leaving thank the Hill. You. I know your, uh, your schedule is tight. And on behalf of Brampton Focus and the folks uh, in Brampton, thank you for your service. And we appreciate you coming and seeing us and um, hope that uh, things work out. Um, we have great faith in you and uh, what you're doing. Uh, a last 10 second pitch. How can people get hold of you email wise? Uh, my email address is ruby.sahota at parl.gc.ca and you can find that online because I know it's quite lengthy uh, but the phone number is quite easy 905-840-0505. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. Ruby Sahota, you've been watching Brampton Focus. My name is Michael Lake Sherball. Thank you very much. Continue contacting us on Facebook and Twitter. We like to hear your reaction. We take your questions in our discussion and we look forward to hearing from you and any uh, subject to uh, topics or shows that you'd like us to do. Once again, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks.